Okay, so this is my second video uh, in putting Windows 10 on a mid-2010 MacBook. Uh, the previous video I showed Windows 8 and played a few games on it and kind of showed what was wrong with Windows 8. Well, here is Windows 8.1, so I just switch it on now. I've got this set up as uh, dual boot and uh, it defaults to Windows. Uh, if you want it to boot into Mac OS, you have to hold down the Alt button and then you get a choice of what OS you want to boot into. So what you notice first of all, when it starts up, and it's pretty quick because this is running on an SSD and eight gig of RAM, uh, is it boots into the desktop environment. So whereas with uh, Windows 8, it, it had all the tiles and was really confusing to people, uh, this boots straight into this desktop environment, which is great. Uh, now, if I press the Windows key or the command key, you can see I can flick between the two options. Uh, and what's nice to see at the top here is we've got a power button. There you go, so you can shut down. That was one of the issues uh, with Windows 8. But if I go back here, you can see that down here we have a Windows button. Now if I press it once, it switches between Windows. But if I right click it, and I'm gonna to need to get a mouse for that. So I plugged in a mouse now. So if I right click it, uh, you get shutdown options here. Uh, but also you get lots of the old legacy Windows uh, functions, so things like Control Panel, uh, Device Manager, uh, Programs and Features, all this was really nice to see. Uh, if you were annoyed that Windows 8 had got rid of everything or hidden everything, uh, and also all the folders and everything pretty much look the same. So if I click on this one, there you go, you can see I've not got a lot of space on this 45 gig drive, but I have got some games as you can see on the left hand side there. So now what's changed as well, so if I click on the Windows Store, uh, you can see at the top you've got an X or a Minimize. Uh, so that was something that Windows 8.1 had added, which was really nice, so if you want to close an app you can. The Windows Store was improved as well, uh, it was just more logical to use. Unfortunately, one thing that has gone is the user experience rating, uh, which was how you used to be able to compare laptops. And I mentioned this in the Windows 8 video. So that was a, a, not a good thing to, to have taken off Windows, and it's never returned to this day. So I also lost this Internet Explorer, the touch version. Uh, on my Windows 8. I don't know why I didn't, in, didn't uninstall it or anything, but you can see that uh, if this is on a touchscreen device, so if I click on here, uh, you can see at the bottom here you've got uh, your URL bar, frequently used apps, you can open tabs and things like that as well, and favourites. So they, they improve this side of it, but also there is no, oh it is still there, so you can still drag down to close it, uh, so if you're using it on a tablet, uh, and they got rid of this. Uh, when Windows 10 came out. So Windows 10 isn't as good on small tablets, but then you don't really see seven and eight inch tablets. But Windows 8.1 was actually a really good operating system on my seven inch Chewy tablet, uh, which is uh, a dual boot Android and, uh, and Windows 8 tablet. I've got Windows 10 on it now, which isn't as good as Windows 8.1, just because Windows 8.1 still had lots of the touch environment in it. But if you're using mouse and keyboard, Windows 8.1 was streets ahead of Windows 8, uh, and, and really not that far different from Windows 10. I, I think that Windows 8 really was a very good operating system. Now also, if you want to see all your apps, uh, if you go to this section, you see there's a down arrow at the bottom. Click on that, and this gives you access to all your apps. And I can do this with the scroll wheel. So again, this, this kind of works with mouse and keyboard fine. I've now got sound on this computer, and the way I achieved that was uh, I've got the Windows 7 Boot Camp USB that the Mac created when I was doing this installation. Um, and uh, I just put it in, found the right driver, and installed it. So I now have sound, so that's gonna be better for the games. You can see that it's called OneDrive now, not SkyDrive as it was in Windows 8. Uh, and lots of this does look very similar. Right, let's have a look at some games. So I've been just, I just did a video yesterday of uh, Redream, which is a Dreamcast emulator running on uh, NVIDIA Shield, because it's available on Android now. Uh, the version I have for this Mac doesn't work, but in Windows, it does work. So if I pick up my Xbox controller, you can see that I've got control here. 
Switch down and launch Tony Hawks. I would play Dave Mirror, my favorite BMX game, but uh, unfortunately it doesn't run uh, at the right speed, whereas Tony Hawks does, which is a bit strange, but I'm hoping someone will come up with an answer. And this is working with an Xbox 360 wired controller. No configuration needed with this Redream, uh, which is a free emulator. There is a paid for version that gives you a uh, high definition and a few more options. Anyway, so that's Tony Hawk's. Let's just do this gap. Oh, have I not got enough speed? Not enough speed. Let's quickly do this gap. Is that enough speed? Yeah. Okay, so that's Tony Hawk's. Let's try another game. Ah, press. So on the Xbox controller, you press the Xbox button that goes back to this menu system, uh, and then I can close that down. So I also have, and I don't know I'm going to do this because uh, the camera's in the way of the keyboard. I've got GTA Vice City, uh, and as usual in my videos, I'm not going to show anything dodgy. Uh, there's going to be no, I'll cut out any swearing by the game, not me. And uh, also, I won't be doing anything illegal. Jump in. GTA plays really well. Actually, I will need to move over to... Oh, not illegal, accident. So you can see GTA runs well. Oh, there's a faster car lap. Oh, it's my friend, he'll let me borrow that. So still really playable today, GTA Vice City. Uh, this is on Steam, uh, so I've got Steam installed on this computer and Steam works perfectly well. Oh, that wasn't, that wasn't the corner I was intending. Weapon there, don't need that, report that to the police. Oh. And armour, look, this was a good place to have come. Oh. Oh, oh dear. Not able to go there yet. Let's just stop and have a look around to show you how lovely it looks. So, plays really well, and what sort of resolution was I playing that on? 
1024 by 768, 16-bit. Um, I tried the 32-bit and it was a bit laggy, um, so that seemed to be the best setting. But there you go, GTA on a Mac. And the last one is Motor Racer, which uh, part of this game is great, which is Motor Racer 3. It's got a trials bike section. And you can see all my settings coming up here, old style. You can see I've got NVIDIA GeForce 320M in this MacBook. Uh, Mac don't use NVIDIA anymore. So you can see this, there's loads of different tracks and everything. The only bit I really like is the trials. Uh, and I bought this pack, this Motor Racer collection from Steam for about two or three pound. It was something really, really cheap. Now, I'm not sure. And you can do this weird bounce thing on this by using the joypad. Oh, oh, that was great. Oh. No, gun. And you do this weird preload the suspension by pressing one button. You've got you've got joypad back and forth control, but it's kind of like a lean thing. But if you press and hold, well in my case the X key. I need to remember what buttons I'm doing. Oh, that was nice. Oh, it just is a really enjoyable game. Oh, overshot that. You kind of do this hold right and up and down with the joypad to, to jiggle about, and I really like that. And you don't see that much in games. If anybody knows of a Trials game that's similar to this, um, with the sort of the slow sort of gameplay that you really have to be careful and oh, not like that. I'd be interested if anybody has a suggestion for a modern, more modern take on this. Okay, that's more of a jump then. Oh, I thought it was going to make that. Status okay. So that's Motor Racer 3. Um, I'm going to play a lot more of that because I really enjoy that. Um, I'm sitting at a funny angle, so it was it was difficult to play. Um, but uh, but if anybody else has any suggestions for uh, moto games like that, uh, not the side-scrolling ones, but the 3D like this, where you've got to really go very slow and it's lots of back balance and things like that, I'd be really be interested in. Oh, we're going to see my replay now, look. Nice. Okay, so let's quit out of that. 
So after this, uh, I'm gonna install Windows 10 um, and, uh, and see that everything's still working because I had, so GTA 3, which worked perfectly well in Windows 8, doesn't work in 8.1, uh, the version that I had, which was a, a no CD version. I've got the original game in my garage, but it's the no CD version that I always used to carry around with me. Um, so that's why I've been using Vice City, but then Steam didn't work in Windows 8 and Steam works in Windows 8.1. So hopefully, uh, because I think this motor racer, I haven't been able to get that to work on a Windows computer for a while. Um, so I'm wondering if Windows 10 doesn't support it. If that is the case, then uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, install Windows 8.1 on an external drive. Uh, one of my super cheap uh, Xbox ones from CEX, which I think I pay 50p for some of them. They're 20 gig, but I think I've got a 60 gig one, which is about two pound fifty, three pounds, something like that. Um, so I'm going to get one of those uh, and install Windows 8.1 on that if the games that I want to use aren't supported. So it's just a good way of having like a retro gaming computer that you can boot from an external drive uh, and you can play it when you want. But ultimately, I want to get Windows 10 on this Mac uh, together with uh, Mac OS. Anyway, I hope this helps and thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.